camera speeds, quiet on set. Uh, this is scene 15A. <laughs> Action. Okay. Uh, could you start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about your experience with Harp Solo Festival? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'll introduce myself by saying my name is Sally McKenzie. I um, was a high school American studies English teacher. I've been a high school librarian at um, three high schools in Maine. And I um, also then got a doctorate and started working at Bowdoin. Then I worked at Bates. Then I worked at Colby. <laughs> then I worked at the University of Maine where I was a professor of educational leadership. And I first heard about HCA even from John Denary, who um, I had known through the years and interestingly had replaced me when I left Freeport High School. He took the job that I had and um, so I, I know I'd known him through the years so he just out of the blue probably emailed me and asked um, if I knew anything about the charter um, charters in Maine and the potential for them and then about uh, specifically about HCA. So we talked a lot about what his vision was, which is brilliant. Um, and I really became just fascinated by it. I was still working very much at, my job was at Orono. So I, but I lived in um, Brunswick and so I gladly joined the board before the school even was approved to be a school. But we had a board and we had um, quite a few members that John had gathered and he uh, sort of led us through the whole, um, the charter had already been written and, and all of that sort of thing, but through the process of getting accepted. And so I was sort of a founding board member. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one still on the board who uh, was part of the founding and have kind of been through the whole trajectory of HCA. I'm sorry? What in the pitch that you heard made you want to join HCA? Like, what were the things when yeah. Daenerys reached out to you made you be like, oh, that, that school is something I want to get oh, involved with? Oh, okay. Um, I can't hear very well, as you can tell. <laughs> um, I, it was, it's really the, the whole picture of a school that was very place-based, project-based, really focused on sustaining the the land sustaining the the culture of Maine and the people in it and with the idea of of real um, action oriented learning and the idea of um, keeping things sort of on a on a small basis, but building it and ultimately having it be a model for how schools could, in fact, operate. Not, I mean, he didn't, and we didn't really want to see it as this little hothouse place that was only for certain people. We wanted to see it as a way of teaching and learning that could grab kids and help them grow and and succeed. Right, okay, so uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your experience serving on the board at HCA? Okay, um, so I was on the 
on the board um, as we were getting ready to have the school accepted, have the, our charter accepted and to form a school. And that was, it was a very exciting time. And we had to um, meet before the, the charter commission and have people from Harpswell all, all over come and, and talk about what it would mean to have a school here in, in this town or in this location, because there really, there was no location at that point. We were still thinking, oh, we could be at the Grange Hall. We could be all over the place. There, this school was not, this, this building was not necessarily um, in the thinking about the school initially. So when we had the big meeting where the charter people came to listen to interested stakeholders, it was, it was really amazing because I think the whole town must have been there and people from all over, including you know the board members, but people were just, so excited about having a school like the school that was described to them, the vision of this kind of school located in this town and available to, sometimes it was new parents, sometimes it was older people who'd, who'd had to send their kids off and you know, all of that sort of thing. So it was, it was a very, very heartwarming experience and so the, I think we were the second school to get the charter accepted. The first one was Means. And um, so we, we were very excited. And so then, that was like in March, April, sometime. And I think of 2004, is that right? Is that right? No, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> um, and. Or 2013? Would it be 13? It was 2013. Yeah. 13. So um, then we had to scramble around and figure out where we could actually be. And there were teachers already hired. John had, had been hired as the designer of the school and not even, he didn't even have the label head of school at that point. Um, but then he could hire teachers and he hired um, I think four and the only one left as you know is um, of course I can't remember her name. Angela Simmons. Angelina Simmons. Angelina. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's really okay. I am kind of losing it. Um, it's been so so long but Angelina uh, Carrie was Carrie Branson was there. Um, there was a math teacher, a, a sort of social studies teacher, but everybody knew that their job was to wear many hats, to be available to counsel kids, to be available to clean the floors, to in some cases drive buses. You know, just it was. And then, and then we were really thinking, could we be in this, I think it was the Grange Hall, with no heat, or heat only for certain times. <laughs> so then this school became available and the town was willing, I think they rented it to us for the first year and the, this library was still the town library. Um, but we, our board meetings we held here at the school and, um, and it was just, by the time September rolled around, we'd already had a board meeting every single week to try to make sure that all the, the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed and we had buses and we had teachers and we had contracts and we had insurance. And I mean, it's just mind boggling to think of what you have to do when you start a school and what you have to do to appease the state, 
the fire marshal, the, um, the, the charter commission, so, and, and, you know, of course, parents, too. So we started with a sixth grade and a ninth grade with the idea that it would build. So then, after we opened in that September, um, and we were adding another grade, so it would have been seventh and uh, tenth, it really became pretty clear that space was going to be an issue. So I think we were here two years. I'm not totally positive of that. Uh, before we, John is a great um, <laughs> negotiator, all of that sort of thing. So he found space on the landing, not the space that we ended up using, but um, a space that was where the, um, uh, something about independence, but I'm not sure what the title was, but we were sort of crammed in there as the high school and the middle school was down here. And so whoever was in charge and we had to keep hiring teachers, um, had to travel back and forth. Nevertheless, to me at least, it seemed brilliant to have the high school up there close to town, closer to Region 10, close to SMCC, and be able to have kids avail themselves of those opportunities and to have this be more, you know, a forming place for the students of that particular age. So as it grew and we added more classes, it just made so much sense to have these two spaces and we went through several different um, configurations of leaders or leadership. Like sometimes we had um, a separate principal here and a separate principal there. Sometimes we had, well, like when Scott was here, we had him be, the, at least the last year, the head of school and um, sort of split that with somebody who could, who could sort of alternate, be here, be here when he wasn't here, and that sort of thing. The really hard, hard thing was not so much, I mean, it was the pandemic, of course, and this school did a wonderful job of dealing with that, but the, the really hard thing was discovering that, uh, we didn't have enough money to keep two campuses going and the decision to move everybody back down to this school, having had to make to accommodate um, the fire, to accommodate various rules, we'd made a lot of structural changes up there which were yeah, useful for the school. It was important. At the same time, it cost a lot. So we had to kind of give up the money that we'd spent on improving or making that school, that place, a more of a school. And then, as you know, had to think about what could we do here. That's where the yurts came in. It was really the last, the year before this was just fraught, especially the spring, with all kinds of really, really hard decisions and, and as you know, the Charter Commission sort of holding us hostage for a long time, saying, well, we don't know if we're gonna let you do this, and finally saying yes. And then you know what happened after that, <laughs> that they ultimately said, we're not gonna renew your charter. That was crushing. Before you go on, um, is it possible that you could put down the little microphone box thing? Is, keeps, am I jiggling it? Uh, no, it's not the noise. It's that it keeps showing up as you're like oh. <laughs> doing Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's, okay. Uh, it's, okay. it's, okay. it's okay. I thought you could do wonders with photography to just get rid of stuff. No, it was yeah. a teacher. Oh, okay. The, the sign is still up on the wall, right? Well, I carry this. Um, I was wondering, did Isaac Becker email you? He has not reached out to me, no. I texted him and said, 
you emailed Gaffney and yeah. he said okay. Okay. Yeah, he hasn't yet. He has not reached out. Um, just send him a reminder. I'm a reminder. God, I don't want to seem desperate. It's clear. I'll send a video to him of you saying it. Okay. After this, of course. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, that's for you. Those are good. Okay. Yeah. I kind of blab on and on. That's, and that's really good, exactly though, honestly. That's yeah. the blabbing is good, yeah. Well, it's like that and, like, we've noticed that some of the interviews have been, like, very anecdote-heavy. Some have been very emotion-heavy. Oh. And, no, like... Yeah, good. good. Was, that's right? good. So, so it's a good what contrast. What we've been lacking is a lot of the stuff that you're just naturally doing of, like, oh. the... The history stuff. The history, yeah, and like yeah. The, those benchmarks of like this is our history and this is like when this happened, this happened. This yeah. Happened. Did so did it's a awesome. Good job of, yeah. Oh, good. Did good. Did a good job, but she's telling it. In yeah. Like, and we just we timeline, which so is perfect. perfect. Yeah. Oh, good. Also, I'm I'm not sure if you guys have said this already. You're kind of asking the questions yourself, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Because it means yeah. I don't have to do as much work. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. This is like the best interview we've done so far, honestly. It's going great. Mm -hmm. It's going great. It's going real well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and what have we got already? Well, I don't know so, where to go. Well, we've, got, we've gotten some pieces. Um, we definitely have experience serving on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can jump to question four. Question four, okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite? Uh, uh, or let's not. Oh. Let's wait until yep. the room's oh, okay. empty. All oh, right, sorry. Is it really? Okay. Cool. okay. Um, okay. I could say a little bit more about the board changing, yeah, if that it. would be helpful. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Give us. This is sort of part of the last question. All right. Let's just let Juliana get something first. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. So, um, the board through the years has probably been a maximum ten people. Now we're down to six, I think. And what we found in getting people to be on the board is that, first of all, people had a lot of misconceptions about a charter school, this school. So we had to do a lot of educating. And then people would say, oh, yeah, I, I might be interested. Even parents might be interested. And so they'd come to meetings and they'd say, this is way too boring. I can't take this. <laughs> so we do, we always try to be sure to have a parent, and we do now, but often uh, it does tend to be people, older people who have more time, and we are people who are dedicated to the notion of the school, maybe don't have a lot of um, of heft in the town or at the towns in which we live in terms of getting money and, and that sort of thing. But we certainly take very seriously our role as ambassadors for the school. Um, I will say that from at the very beginning, we had a lot of Harpswell people, uh, the founders, the people who gave at least $500 initially, the founders, and they were just thrilled to have um, something in this building. Many of them were summer people, and so some people on the board, that's partly maybe why it's called Academy. They wanted it to be very rigorous and, and just really had, I don't know if they'd even read what the school was about because they, they, they really were concerned about, um, well, they didn't say, let's be sure we offer Latin to everybody, but they, they were thinking of it almost like a prep school or something. So those people did not last on the board. And there were some, because John, well, all of us, the people who signed on, the, the view of governance of this board was that the board makes the policy. The only hire they make is of the head of school. They don't get into other hires. They don't get into 
Um, are you disciplining this child? Are you um, just very much not micromanaging, but some initial board members wanted to micromanage. And sadly, that may be what's going on in SAD 75 now, and that's why the superintendent is leaving, you know, because it's just too, um, it's inappropriate for board members to, to get that involved. So we went through um, one, well, Joe, um, yeah, that guy, <laughs> who was a wonderful initial uh, chair of the board, but his job, you know, his life's work on farms and stuff was too much. So I think, I think it was in the second summer that I became chair of the board, and I was chair for the next five years, I think. And then, and I'd already gotten Cynthia to be on the board. She happens to live two doors down from me. And um, so essentially we switched roles. She had been the secretary, so I became the secretary and I told her, oh, piece of cake to be the chair of the board. Well, poor Cynthia has had <laughs> a lot more stuff to do than I ever had to do. Um, so she's, she's really borne the brunt of that switch. Um, Nevertheless, I still have to write up all the minutes and, and that sort of thing, but that's not, that's not heavy lifting compared to what she's doing. And the board has sort of whittled down through the years too, um, just with people saying, um, not this wasn't what I thought it was, it's more I've been here for my two terms, um, I really need to, move on to something else. And, and that happened incrementally. And then this past year, even, even before the, the horrible decision, we were down to the six, five or six people, really dedicated people. But some of the other dedicated people are off the board now. But that's where we are. I mean, I swear there's like about a thousand different follow-ups we could ask through that, but I think oh, it might yeah. be good to just keep going. <laughs> so I think, okay. Um, yeah. Did we do question four? We have not really done question four as a whole. Of just like, do you have any favorite memories or significant experiences? Oh yeah. Um, I loved <laughs> eating lunch down here because our meetings were down here, and as chair of the board, I had to be here a lot. You know, meeting with John, meeting, and then when Carrie was the, the head, meeting with her. Um, but moving to the landing meant that that's where our board meetings were after a while. So I kind of missed lunch. The food was just really good, and it was just so fun to sit with the kids. I loved bringing people here, especially, you know, potential board members, and having them come in on classes and see the kids and ask them questions and deal and, and, and be very impressed by their ability to articulate what they were learning, why they were doing what they were doing, which is quite impressive for students to be able to do that. And it's an important learning um, aspect of learning. Um, I loved um, the time that we had a celebration at what's now, well, it's, it's a bed and breakfast or um, inn, I guess, on the mall in Brunswick. I forget what the name is now, 181 or something like that. And because Eileen, the owner of that, was on our board. So we had a, she might have been off it at that point, but we nevertheless, we had a celebration there and a big party and kids were there with um, displays of what they were doing. And again, they could articulate their, their learning. They could, um, they were, and it wasn't, it wasn't all seniors or 
but it was it was more high school kids I, I guess I'd have to say we've had other situations like that with all ages and those are just really really very rewarding um, the, the time that there was a film I think it was of interviewing lobstermen or people fishermen and and it was a major major accomplishment to create this film, which I'm sure this will be very much like that. Um, uh, something about working on the sea or something, and that was held at Bowdoin in um, one of the arts uh, uh, screening places. So just being with the teachers and the students and having their pride in their work, their understanding of their work is, is just very rewarding for a board member who, you know, isn't here day to day. And even though, you know, I spent my life among either high school students or adults who were um, teachers aspiring to be principals, et cetera, et cetera. So school is kind of my life. So it was great. Okay. What were you saying? I was saying this is actually the, the successor to that class. It's the same like Voices project. So you're thinking of Voices of the Working Waterfront. Uh, yes, the yes. Working Waterfront. It wasn't just lobstermen or, yeah, yeah, right, right. I got it. The Voices of HCA. Uh, are we there, or do we want to? Mm, I feel like we got. Uh, I wanna. I wanna go. Eight, six. Um, nine, ten. Do we have enough SD yeah, card space? We uh, we're kind of. We're running a little low, so I might. Oh. Okay. Might I have might, to stop and plug in or no, something. There's, there's two. Unless you have to do a full thing, or do you have both SD cards loaded in? Um, I. I don't have one of them in the camera right now, so I'm gonna cut. 